Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about CCXT. I have the GitHub page open here and CCXT is short for Cryptocurrency Exchange Trading. And I'm gonna be doing a little bit more uh, crypto content in the near future because number one, uh, you know, it's pretty hot right now. I wanna stay uh, current even though I do a lot of stock and option content. I would also like to do more crypto videos. Uh, my crypto videos are actually becoming some of my most popular. So I want to continue to provide uh, what's interesting to people and what is uh, current. And also I like that the, the crypto market is open 24 seven. I'm recording on Saturday night right now due to the way my schedule is with my day job. So uh, I like that I can uh, trade crypto and uh, build some trading bots on the weekend because price data is always coming in. And so I like that I can show some live trading uh, in these types of videos. Uh, the second reason I want to do this is I've received some emails uh, recently saying, oh, what happened to, you know, your trading bots and what the channel is about. Uh, I've recently done a variety of videos on uh, databases and dashboards and visualizations and, th and caching, Redis caching, time series databases, things like that. Um, and those are great tools to have, but also a lot of people really just want to see uh, trading bots and uh, indicators and strategies and buying and selling stuff, which it which attracted a lot of people to this channel. So I want to uh, come back to that and provide a little bit more of that content. But I still like to uh, get away from that as well. I don't want this channel to be just about you know creating trading bots. I don't want to be the trading bot guy, even though that is part of the channel. I want to. Uh, cover a broad variety of programming tools for the financial markets. So I want to go beyond that as well. But I'm going to bring it back in a little bit to uh, trading again. And so today I'm going to talk about CCXT and do a little short tutorial on this uh, for the video for part one. And then we'll add, you know, some strategies for uh, part two. Uh, but first I want to do a quick overview of the CCXT uh, library. This is fairly new to me. I was looking into it recently. Some people had asked about it. So I want to cover this. Uh, so what's unique about this? Why do I need this CCXT uh, cryptocurrency trading API. So I have the GitHub page open up here, github.com slash CCXT. If I click on that and it says it's a JavaScript, Python, PHP, cryptocurrency trading API with support for more than 120 Bitcoin and altcoin exchanges. So what is cool about this? If you remember some of my previous videos on crypto, um, I did a series of videos on the Binance API and we used the Python Binance client uh, to make some trades there. And also there's some videos, if you're watching closely in some of my stock videos even, I actually did some tutorials on Coinbase Pro in there just to show some things on some live data. And so I used uh, some Coinbase Pro libraries to do that and got WebSocket data from a Coinbase Pro. Um, however, um, one weakness to those is that I had to, and they're not really a weakness, but I used a variety of different libraries that are very specific to each exchange. So no matter what exchange uh, you use, a lot of times they have their own Python package, which is completely different. And what this CCXT library attempts to do is to provide a common interface uh, for all those libraries. So it makes all of those uh, functions and classes very abstract, right? And so not only uh, does it have support for Python. If you don't want to uh, code in Python, you maybe you're a JavaScript coder or a PHP uh, coder, you know, you can use any of these languages as well. And I might even demonstrate those JavaScript and PHP versions of this. So I wanted to cover uh, this library in full and see what it is capable of. But you see it has support for many cryptocurrency exchanges. So not everyone is on Coinbase or Binance. There's all these other exchanges. Um, I've recently had some people reach out to me for a brand deal. So there's like a Bybit and Bittrex and all, the, all these other exchanges, which I haven't had time to fully look into, uh, but this uh, supports those exchanges out of the box. So I don't really need to know a lot about the underlying exchange or a very specific API and how it authenticates and all its method names, I can just use this common library that exposes a common set of methods. And so if you look here, right, uh, at the overview, we have a list of methods that are supported uh, by this CCXT library. And so you see, you can load the market, load markets, fetch markets, get fetch a ticker, fetch the order book, uh, open high, low, close data, 
create orders. And so there's often like a common set of things we want to do uh, with all of these different uh, exchanges or brokers, right? We're getting historical data, we're getting quotes, we're uh, creating market orders, limit orders and all that, right? And there's no reason we have to have completely different libraries. We need to uh, have uh, different and differently named methods for all that. What's nice about this is it provides a common interface to the, to uh, all these different exchanges. So all I need to do is provide a couple of API keys, uh, the API key and API secret that all of them have, and then I can just call a method called uh, create order, and it'll create an order on whatever exchange that I'm using. And so I want to demonstrate the basics of this uh, first, how to get it installed and, and how to use it. And so let's go ahead and get started with this and see uh, how we can use this. So on the right side of my screen here, I have a Visual Studio Code Editor as usual. Uh, it's empty. And so what I'm gonna do is create a new folder. So I'm just gonna do open and I'll just call this a CCXT uh, bot. And let's just create a new folder here. So in this new folder, I'm going to create a couple files. Usually I create a config.py where I'll store uh, any API keys or credentials that I need all in one place. And I create a requirements.txt where I list the names of any dependencies I need. And so I'm gonna be using CCXT and I'm also gonna use a package called schedule when we get to the trading bot portion of this series. And so I'm going to put a schedule in there as well. And so if I do, uh, pip3 install-r requirements.txt that should install ccxt and the scheduling package or you can just install it on its own so i can do pip install ccxt and you'll be good to go and so i'll create another uh, file called bot.py and now that i have ccxt i can just do import ccxt and you can just try to run this real quick to make sure it runs without any errors. And that means you have the package installed successfully. So here is the documentation for CCXT and we need to see what we can do. So the first thing we want to do is let's see uh, what exchanges are available. So let's see the first Python example they have in the documentation. So uh, let's see usage. Uh, so you have a, you need to type uh, the exchange and then a certain method name. And so in Python here, you see they import CCXT and then they instantiate uh, whatever exchange they're using. So if it's a Bitmax or Kraken or Binance, right? It has an exchange ID. Uh, so let's let's do that. So import CCXT and you see here I have exchange ID equals Binance. And then exchange class is get attribute of CCXT exchange ID. Um, and let's break that down a little bit in case you don't know what that means. Uh, so if I were to print dir CCXT, so dir in Python, right? It just lists uh, whatever attributes or uh, functions are available on a given object. So I print that out and you see, uh, you see there's all these attributes like Coinbase and a, and a Deribit and exchanges and exchanges is one of the attributes. So uh, what I could do here is uh, print ccxt.exchanges and we can actually list all the exchanges that are supported. So you see this returns a list and this is all the exchanges available. So I could technically loop through all these. So I could do for exchange in ccxt.exchanges and I can print uh, the exchange and you see this will list all the exchanges one by one and you see their support for Coinbase Pro and you'll see that Binance is listed under here uh, somewhere, B -I Binance, Binance US. I think I'd probably use Binance US, right? Okay, so that's all the exchanges. So if I wanna use a particular exchange, all I have to do is uh, instantiate it. So I can do exchange equals and I can do ccxt.binance and I'll have a Binance exchange uh, object. So I'll do uh, print exchange there and you'll see that will actually print out uh, Binance there at the bottom. But I could also do a ccxt.coinbase, right? So I'll do Coinbase like that, right? And that'll give me the Coinbase exchange. And you see this example code, what they did is they just used a string attribute and they used Python's built-in get attribute here and so they just get either Binance or uh, a Coinbase object 
and then they run that as a function and give it a, a couple of parameters to use an API key. So you don't need an API key for anything yet unless you're accessing something specific about uh, your account. Uh, but this exchange object on its own, you can do, uh, you can call a variety of functions that are, that access public information. So if I do exchange dot uh, load markets, for instance, and I store that in a variable, markets equals exchange load markets, and then I print those, what does that do? So I do that and you see it prints a whole bunch of data there, right? And what this does is show you all the different uh, currency pairs that are available. And so I could actually loop through those. So I can do for market in markets and I can print market like that and I'll remove that one. And you can see all these different currencies that are available on a Coinbase since I instantiated Coinbase. But if I instantiated Binance or Binance US, do that, and you see there's all these other currencies available, right? And so uh, one feature that's advertised in some of the examples is the ability to trade between different exchanges. So you could see, you know, there's all these exchanges available. So if you look through the documentation on the overview here, there's a common set of functions that you can call, and then there's all these different exchanges. And so uh, one thing that uh, it's possible is that you can look through all these exchanges for some obscure coins and see if they're trading at different prices on different exchanges. And maybe there's some kind of arbitrage opportunities or something like that. I haven't actually tried that before, but it's one thing uh, people talk about when they're talking about this library. So maybe that's something to investigate as well. And maybe that's not as easy as now as it used to be. I'm not sure. So um, so yeah, so there's a bunch of different uh, markets that are available and you can see uh, what we what we can trade. Okay, so now that we know uh, what markets are available, uh, yeah, let's try something simple like uh, getting a quote or using one of these um, other built-in methods. So if I look through and I jump into this, uh, you can see there's a variety of uh, functions available. So uh, fetch, yeah, fetch ticker is one of them. And so, yeah, let's see if we can fetch a particular ticker. So let's see, Zen USD. Um, yeah, let's try that one. So I'm gonna do um, exchange dot fetch ticker. And let's try that one. And so I'll do a ticker equals Zen USD. And then I'll print ticker. If I do that, yeah, you see we got some data here and we can see um, a bid and ask, some volume data, that sort of, and the close, that sort of thing. So we're just basically fetching a quote. And let's see if we want to fetch, let's see, uh, multiple tickers. We could probably pass a list of different tickers, uh, OHLCV. So we could do uh, OHLC equals exchange dot uh, fetch OHLCV. And let's get it for Ethereum. And let's see, USD, I think that'll work, or USDT. And let's print um, OHLC like that. If I do that, um, you'll see we have a lot of data for uh, Ethereum, and I can loop through that since the list. So I'll do for candle in uh, OHLC, print candle, right? And you see, we just have historical data for Ethereum. I didn't even need to provide an API key yet. This is all just publicly available. So I can either fetch it from Binance or I can easily switch it over and do a Coinbase as well. And let's see, uh, Coinbase doesn't have ZenUSD. Uh, so I'll get rid of that. And let's see if it has ETHUSD. So these uh, tickers, they have slightly different names on Coinbase versus um, Binance. So let's see what it's called on Coinbase. So for market in markets, um, if Ethereum in market, uh, print the market, and let's see what it's called on Coinbase. So yeah, they have a whole bunch of symbols here. And so they have ETHUSD like that. So they don't have ETHUSDT, so I'll do like that. And so if I want to see what it's like on Coinbase, I can do that. Okay. And fetch OHLCV. I think I need to use Coinbase Pro actually. Let's see if that works. There you go. So I have the historical data using Coinbase Pro. 
and then we have different timestamps here. So this fetched, I believe, 500 is the default. So if I jump in there, you'll see uh, you can fetch your open, high, low, close data for a given symbol. The default time frame is one minute, but you can say you want the daily or the five minute or the hourly. And you can say since a certain time. So if you just want all the ones since yesterday, and you can fetch a certain limit. So let's say um, I only want um, time frame equals uh, 15 minutes. Uh, let's do that. And I let's say I want only limit equals five. So I want like five 15 minute bars. And let's see if I can fetch that, right? And so that just returns five 15 minute bars. That's a Unix timestamp. So if I go to unixtimestamp.com and see what time that is, type that in, you'll see that's from April 3rd, um, at the 45 minute mark. And if I check the one after that, that's probably at the hour mark. So I'll do that. So I'll paste that one in. Right. And so that's 15 minutes later. And then this is the most recent 15 minute bar. And so if I type that in, yeah, you see, um, that's at the 45 minute mark there. And so, yeah, that's how you get historical data, um, using CCXT. And you see, it's very easy to sw swap between Binance, and Coinbase Pro, and maybe you wanna check different prices between different exchanges or trade on different exchanges um, in the same program, that sort of thing, and that's all possible. Okay, uh, so what's next? Let's see, there's like a fetch order book function, so we could call um, order book equals exchange dot fetch order book, right? And then that might have a symbol of Ethereum USD as well. And then we could print that out and you get the idea, right? There's just a bunch of generic functions that we can call and, you know, access that data. Right. And so, uh, the next thing we'll do, let's try to do something that's not uh, public. Let's see if we can do something specific to our account. And so to do that, we actually need to use an API key. So I'm going to going to, uh, add an API key in this config.py. And so I can do Binance API key equals, you know, some value and Binance secret key equals some value and it'll be my Binance key. So if I go to my dashboard, you know, I have a variety of accounts available. So this one has a few hundred bucks um, that I can use. And if you log into Binance, you should be able to get an API key. So there's part-time Larry, there's API management and I can get my API key, okay? So I'm gonna put it in this file and edit it out and see what is possible. All right, now that I have my API key in, I can do a format like this where I use my API key and secret key. So this is the Python edition. And so we just instantiate our class. And so you see, we just uh, give it a dictionary here with our API key and secret. And so uh, for my exchange here, when I instantiate Coinbase Pro or Binance, so I'll do uh, Binance US here, okay? And then I can just give this a dictionary and it's called uh, API key. And I give it my API key, which is in config. So I'll import uh, config. Okay. And then I don't need this one anymore. Okay. So Binance US config dot Binance API key. And my secret is config dot Binance secret key, just like that. Um, and I'll comment out some more stuff. And let's see if I can get some information that's specific to this uh, small account that I have here. So I'll do a uh, balance equals exchange dot load. Let's see what's available to us. Fetch, fetch balance. Okay. And that should show some information about our balance. So I'm going to uh, print that out. Okay. And you see, I have zero of a lot of things, but you see, you know, I have a fraction of a fraction of Ethereum, a little small amount there. And you see there's like 450 bucks there. So you see it has it break, broken down by uh, different currencies and what my balance is. So I can fetch my balance there. Likewise, if I want to uh, fetch some Coinbase Pro information, I can use my Coinbase Pro information here. And so I'm gonna put my Coinbase Pro information inside of the config file. I can swap out and use my 
uh, Coinbase Pro API key in my Coinbase Pro secret. And Coinbase Pro also has a passphrase. And so if I go to my Coinbase Pro here, uh, if you click on this on your username, there's API here and you should get a key and a secret and also a password. And so if I go over here, you'll see um, Coinbase Pro has a, a password involved. So there'll be an extra attribute for Coinbase Pro. Okay, config.coinbase.pro and I'll call it password and I'll fill these in um, and edit it out and then I'll show you what it does. So I'm gonna run this for Coinbase Pro and fetch my Coinbase Pro balances. And so I'll do four balance in balances and we'll just see how much I have in each uh, coin. So if I print that out, uh, you'll see, okay. So that just does the keys. Let me print out, uh, let me just print the balances as a whole. And you will see that uh, there's all these different uh, symbols here, and so you see a uh, USDC. Yeah, you see there's like eight dollars, eight US dollars in here, and I believe I have a coin called Numerair. Yeah, so Numerair NMR. Um, I have a little bit of that. Um, so yeah, so now if I do uh, balances, I believe it's balances total is the key. Yeah, balances total, and then you'll see uh, Numerair there. And if I do, so if I do my total numeraire, and if I print a uh, balances total uh, USD, right? And you'll see I have $8 there and I have 0.28 numeraire. And numeraire is just some coin uh, that's part of this numeri competition that I've mentioned before. So numeraire token, it's something you stake on these uh, machine learning uh, finance comp trading competitions here. I haven't used it yet, but I bought one just to get ready to do this in the future. So this is something I'm gonna try out a little bit later. Uh, so I have uh, some of this particular coin. And so that's how you get your balances and that's how you use your API keys. And you see how I'm able to switch seamlessly between Coinbase Pro and Binance, and I can even make this more dynamic by, uh, in my config file, if I put my API keys in like a dictionary for each exchange, I could switch between uh, Coinbase and Binance by putting, you know, exchange ID, uh, exchange ID equals some string, uh, similar similar to what they did uh, in the example, exchange ID equals uh, Binance here, and then getting an attribute dynamically. So very easy to swap between exchanges and call the same uh, functions on each one. Um, and I guess to wrap this up for this brief tutorial here, uh, I'll go ahead and make an order. So um, in my Coinbase Pro account here, um, you see I have like eight bucks here. Um, so what I can do is spend some of it. So let's see if I wanna create an order, I can do exchange dot uh, create, and you can see I can create a buy order, a limit order, uh, market order, right? And so I can create a uh, market buy order and then give it some parameters. So I just give it a symbol and an amount. And so let's say a uh, numeraire is the coin that I'm buying. So um, the symbol here is M NMR uh, USD. And let's just say, uh, I think that's like 50 bucks. So let's just say I want a fraction of one of those. I can do, um, 0 0.01 there and just use some of my dollars to buy a numeraire and I can do order equals and just store the results of that and print the order and let's see what happens. So I'll use that, right? And you see I had a 0.28 numeraire and then now, and my do US dollars, I had $8 and 47 cents. Um, if I run this again, for instance, you'll see now I have 0.29, you know, I bought some more and now I have $7.95. And actually that's before I bought another one. So I probably have 0.3 numeraire and less money. And if you look on the left side here, you can see indeed I ran my Python code and I have a less dollars here. So I'm losing dollars by the minute and I have more of these numeraire coins. So I'm gonna click play again and you're gonna see this number on the left, 744 go down to six, you know, six and change. So I'll do that and let's look on the left. Yeah, so $6.93. And then if I look at my balance, um, you can see 
uh, if I type, yeah, Numerair uh, USD, you can see I have 0.31 of those now. And yeah, so uh, that's pretty cool. So now we have the introduction to using a CCXT. We're able to uh, use our API key to connect it to our account, create buy and sell orders, fetch historical data, get a quote, um, look at our balance. Um, yeah, the usual things. And so in the next video, I'm going to use the uh, scheduling package here. So this uh, scheduling package to uh, run some functions periodically. So every few minutes or whatever trading strategy we do, uh, we'll run uh, some code every five minutes or 15 minutes, uh, fetch some data, maybe apply an indicator or a strategy, and then create some orders to create a simple trading bot once again. So. Uh, let me know uh, what trading strategy you want to see in the next video. Maybe there's some script you've seen on TradingView that you've always been interested in and you want to see how you'd actually implement that in Python code and I'll make a video on it and do it. And if no one picks anything, I'll just do um, some things I've heard in the past. For instance, uh, someone was asking about a super trend. Uh, so that's, that's something we could do. So this super trend indicator that I guess detects uh, changes in trend here, right? And gives buy and sell signals. So uh, there's some scripts like that in PineScript and I can write a Python uh, version of this super trend uh, trading strategy here. And yeah, show you what that looks in Python and use CCXT to do that. And we'll just fetch some data on a schedule and implement super trend, which I believe uses um, ATR combined with a moving average, I think for this strategy, people implement it in different ways. So I'll talk about this in the next video, or if, if you have a better idea, let me know. And that will be the subject of the next video. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for the next one.